named Dave Wright coming in. Uh, hello, David. Hi, good to see you. Thanks for coming in the Cube. Thanks a lot. And uh, my co-host David Floyer is going to join me here. So, um, so we got we're going to talk a little startup action, flash, disc, tape. What's happening out there? So tell us a little bit about uh, your company. You're in Stealth. Yep. Right? So uh, what kind of signals? Can you, can you send some smoke signals out to our audience? Or? Yeah, we, we can talk a little bit about what we're doing. So, uh, so Solidfire is a next-generation storage company. We're, uh, we're focused on serving the needs of, of cloud service providers and particularly focused on the challenge of primary storage in the cloud. Uh, you know, we've seen the, the growth of cloud storage for backup and archival, but uh, now we're seeing a lot of applications moving into the cloud completely, people running their virtualized infrastructure completely in cloud service provider infrastructures. And, and as they do that, there's a need for, uh, for high performance primary storage in the cloud. Uh, and that's really the challenge we're focused on uh, solving for these, uh, these cloud providers. So do I have to ask you, were you at the brocade party last night? Or? Uh, I, I was no. not. The music was very loud. We were there and you know, I tried not to yell too much, but my, my colleague John Furry's voice a little shot. It's, it's uh, dry out here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've been, I've been talking for two days straight. <laughs> Good. That means people are interested. Yeah. Absolutely. So, it's, so, uh, it's uh, stuff. so I've got one question for you, David. Um, uh, that's a tough place to go into, the service providers, isn't it? Why, why did you choose that place to go go after? Why, why not sure. the enterprise or why not uh, yeah, it, lower down in the stack? It, it's a good question. So uh, so my background's in the service provider space. Uh, okay. I spent, where, uh, where were you before you started your company? Uh, yeah. I spent some time at Rackspace. Uh, oh, okay. Rackspace acquired my last company, which was in the online backup and storage space. And uh, so I spent some time there, uh, really got some good experience building and managing a large scale cloud environment and saw, saw the challenges, particularly around storage and particularly around primary storage mm -hmm. and, and, and saw the need w that was there and, and really the poor job that uh, the enterprise guys were doing solving those issues for the service providers. Right. So, so tell us about the name, Solid Fire. What's, uh, what's the implication? Sure. So, uh, so the solid part comes from, uh, from the architecture of our solution. And it's an architecture built around solid state storage. Uh, we think it's probably one of the first architectures that's been built completely from the ground up around solid state, removing all of the legacy spinning disk and focusing on what you can do with solid state if you start from scratch and build a storage architecture completely around solid state storage. As opposed to what, sort of bolting it on existing storage array or... Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're seeing a lot of solid state in the market today, primarily as an add-on to existing storage solutions, being used as a tier of storage, as a cache for storage, and you're getting some benefits from that, uh, but I don't think you're really seeing the full benefit of solid state, and, and you're not able to optimize these solutions around solid state. You've got architectures that have been built, built up over the last 30 years around disk, and augmenting with the solid state is, uh, is not really solving the entire problem. So uh, can you lift the kimono a little bit? Well, what's this secret Show us sauce a little you leg, have there to, uh, to, to optimize this? What, what, what makes you think that you can uh, get rid of all these uh, high spinning disks? So, uh, so the two kind of really interesting things about what we're doing that uh, we're starting to talk a little bit about is, is number one, the performance piece. Uh, and when we talk about performance, uh, obviously using solid state gives us a lot of performance, you know, orders of magnitude more performance than disk-based solutions. Uh, but it's not just about the raw performance. It's, it's about delivering usable performance to thousands of applications in the cloud and being able to guarantee that level of performance. And that's something that's very difficult to do with traditional storage systems and particularly disk-based systems just because of the physics uh, of the system. Uh, and so a lot of what we're doing in our architecture is around delivering guaranteed performance to applications in a cloud environment. Uh, the other piece of it is around efficiency and, and about finding ways to make an all solid state system affordable uh, and not just, you know, make it uh, competitive, but in many cases make it more efficient from both a capital and an operational cost perspective than spinning disk uh, solutions and, and really making it a no brainer to move to an all solid state system. So how do you, how do you do that? Uh, so we're not talking a lot about the uh, internals of the technology, uh, but what we are doing a, a lot of is focusing on efficiency, focusing on reducing the actual footprint of storage that you need to buy and manage, uh, and making it uh, significantly more efficient than disk-based solutions are today. So just conceptually, I would think that anything you could do to, to solid state from efficiency standpoint, you could do to spinning disk. So from a cost standpoint, that and I'd love for you to correct me if I'm wrong, sure. but that parity, you know, or disparity will, will remain. But is the premise that at some point the performance just becomes so compelling and you reach 
some below some cost threshold that it's just a, a wave of adoption? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, your first statement about uh, whatever you can do with solid state, you can do with disk isn't, isn't necessarily true. Uh, the physics and the performance levels of solid state are so different. Uh, the architecture that we're building around it is so different that uh, that we really are able to do some things that just aren't possible on disk. Our architecture, if we put it on disk, it, it just wouldn't function, and you certainly wouldn't get the efficiency that we can get with solid state storage. Uh, so I think that's a perception that, that needs to change. Uh, but the other thing is most... Uh, most people, particularly in primary storage, are not struggling with capacity. There's so much capacity available with disk. It's a performance challenge, and it's about optimizing performance. Uh, and so it's really kind of flipping the problem on its head with solid state, where you've got tremendous capacity, or you've got tremendous performance available, and it's about making optimum use of the capacity. Uh, and that's really what our technology is focused on. Isn't a big part of the performance challenge of, of obviously, the mechanics of the disk are the biggest. Sure. But isn't there a component of it, and I don't know, maybe you can help quantify this, that it's just the overheads associated with you know, storage protocols, the SCSI stack, et cetera. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, you're seeing a lot of move to things like Fusion I.O., which are improving uh, latencies through not just using solid state, but actually putting it directly on the bus. Uh, and for certain applications, that level of, of performance is, is absolutely critical. Um, you know, we're not necessarily trying to replace the entire storage stack. Uh, we're just trying to replace and update the part of it that, that's 30 years old, uh, the part of it that really hasn't changed uh, in decades, which is the disk. And, and that's the biggest bottleneck there today. Uh, and the rest of it, you know, we've seen tremendous improvements in processing power, in controller speeds, in networking speeds uh, over the past 30 years. But the disk itself fundamentally hasn't changed. So, uh, and, so and the new way of putting this is that previously tape sucks, and now you're saying disk sucks. Is that right? Is uh, that absolutely. Your, uh, and, uh, tagline you know, I for I don't think we'll find too many arguments with that. Um, you know, disk is is great for capacity constrained applications. It's great for uh, backup, archival. Um, you know, some big data applications. But anything where you actually want to work with the data you're storing, anything where access is really important, performance, latency is extremely important. Disk does suck, and it, and it has for a long time. You know, David, I think you wrote something like that recently, didn't you? Is yes, uh, <laughs> I, I, I wrote uh, around architectures of the future, and uh, I said that the central piece of the architecture would be uh, processors and solid-state storage in the middle, and then you'd have another layer of storage around it for your archi archiving and uh, low-performance stuff, which would be shared. Uh, what's interesting, about, and, and my premise was that uh, a lot of that, that solid-state storage would be on the servers themselves. Uh, but this is an interesting uh, addition to that uh, architecture, which is a, a, a essentially a shared storage uh, to, the, uh, to the processes, um, uh, but, but with much greater performance. Yeah, your, and, your discussion, the research note that David wrote was really around Fusion I.O., the whole concept of, you know, Fusion I.O. is not a storage company, it's a systems company. And sure and that whole thing. One of the things you talked about in that article, and I wonder if we can get Dave's sense of this, is um, Facebook and the data center in Facebook. Yeah. Of course, that's a big Fusion IO customer. And, and, and you know, is Facebook a, a bellwether or an outlier? Um, Dave, thinking about service providers and the data center design of service providers and how conceptually your solution might fit in, what's changing in terms of data center design, particularly in the, the service provider space? Sure. You know, so I think the, the big change that's coming to service providers uh, is this cloud technology. So we're, we're moving from service providers that were primarily focused on co-location or managed hosting on dedicated hardware infrastructures, and now we're moving into this cloud hosting infrastructure where you've got much more density. Uh, you've got a lot denser architectures with more uh, compute in a smaller space, more customers sharing hardware, sharing storage, uh, and that is increasing the, the pressure on the bottlenecks in the system. And storage uh, continues to be the big place where they're bottlenecked and, and where we're not seeing uh, the dramatic improvements that we've had in compute and networking. Uh, that just hasn't been forthcoming in storage. And so um, that's really where we think we can help break the deadlock, and break the gridlock in the data center is mm -hmm. by uh, catching the storage piece up so to what's going on in compute networking. So talk about where you're at with the company. What can you share with us in terms of you know, funding, headcount, you know, when, sure. when you're going to be unstealth? Yeah, so uh, we've been in development for a couple of years now. Uh, we've got a great team of people on board. 
Um, we've got an engineering team that's a mix of people from uh, data center backgrounds, from virtualization backgrounds, as well as from traditional storage companies. Uh, a significant portion of the engineering team are guys that came from left-hand networks and HP, so we've got some great uh, distributed storage DNA as part of the system. Uh, the company's well-founded. Uh, we raised our Series A round in January. We've got about $12 million in funding to date. Uh, the Series A round was led by uh, NEA as well as uh, Valhalla and Novak Biddle. Uh, so we've sorry, got who's, who was backing you? Uh, NEA is the lead NEA investor, and, Valhalla, and uh, Valhalla and Novak Biddle are, are invested as well. Uh, so we're well funded, uh, we're moving fast, and we're uh, looking to get uh, our system in customers' hands very, very soon. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So, um, and I'm personally rooting for you because um, I love going to Colorado, and uh, there used to be tons of storage companies back in my days at IDC. With, you know, storage tech, digital was in Colorado Springs, and you know, all those optical storage companies out there that you're, you're too young to remember. But, um, you know, it's, storage was a, a real sort of, uh, Boulder was a real innovation center back in the day for storage, and uh, storage tech, love to see it come back. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of great storage DNA in the area, and we're looking to, uh, to hire a lot of it. Yeah. All right, Dave Wright, SolidFire, CEO, new stealth company. We had just got a glimpse, uh, tape sucks, storage sucks. Um, well, disc sorry, sucks. tape sucks, disc yeah. sucks, sucks. Uh, storage doesn't suck because we're here at EMC World. We can't say that. <laughs> They'll throw us out. But uh, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Great to